Hey folks, before we get into today's video, I want to remind you to enter our Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition giveaway for the month of May. Uh, the winner will be announced on the final day of the month. Uh, to enter, all you have to do is like the video, subscribe, comment down below, and hit that bell icon and set it to all notifications. That way you are aware of every video that goes up this month so you can gain additional entries since you can gain one entry per video. Thank you guys so much and good luck. All right, folks, how's it going? A little bit different today, not on camera for this particular video, but this is in particular to Nintendo dealing with the Switch hacking community. Now, if you guys remember, I haven't talked about the Switch hacking community really since 2018 uh, when I put out a now infamous video about how Nintendo stopped Switch hacking, and then the conclusion was they haven't really stopped it. They just made it more difficult, according to Switch hackers, and Nintendo is constantly battling back and forth with various exploits and hacks of uh, their platforms to try to essentially combat piracy seems to be their main uh, brux of the argument here. But uh, Nintendo is actually going after the websites that sell the devices and or the tools that you need in order to hack your device, whether they're homebrew software or whatever the case might be. And uh, Nintendo's actually had a very good history in winning these lawsuits. Um, now, this all of this comes from uh, Bloomberg Law. Uh, they have the, all the documents here, uh, and so does Polygon as well, which you don't have to pay. So I'll, I'll link to Polygon down below so you can see all 30 documents of the, of the two lawsuits Nintendo just filed uh, you know, last Friday. But uh, here's the crux of what's going on. So the first lawsuit that was filed on Friday was in an Ohio court against Tom Diltz Jr., who is the alleged operator of a website called Uber Chips. Um, the second lawsuit was filed in Seattle on the same day against a number of defendants uh, from a bunch of different websites, and all the defendants reportedly sell products from a group of anonymous hackers called Team Executor. Now, if you've heard of them before, that's because they have been one of the leading people selling uh, those the the little pin thing where you can where you can like short the pins to gain access in addition to additional software. They've been really hacking the switch for quite some time, uh, and other products as well. Um, and according to Nintendo, the products allow the users uh, to get around Nintendo's technological protection measures that are designed to protect its products from unauthorized access and copying. Um, essentially, once uh, it's that's disabled, players can download the unauthorized operating system and play pirated video games. So again, Nintendo doesn't care about people backing up their save files. Or None of that stuff's against the law. It's that this, these tools happen to be used for pirating, and it's well known that hack, that hack switches are used for pirating. Um, you know, a Nintendo lawyer described the products as unauthorized operating system and accompanying piracy tools that install it. Uh, in an attempt to crack down on hacks, Nintendo is actually focusing its legal efforts on resellers. This isn't new. Uh, in 2018, Nintendo filed a similar lawsuit against a team executor hack reseller. Uh, and in this past January, it actually won an injunction against the defendant of that case, Sergio Marjaro Moreno. So winning that injunction kind of means that Nintendo is going down the right path here uh, to try to stop this stuff, although it obviously takes a long time to go through the legal process. Um, Sergio uh, was ordered by the courts to stop reselling the hacks. Uh, Nintendo filed a lawsuit in September of last year against a ROM website, ROM Universe, which allows people to download pirated video games for for systems and others and these weren't just like roms for old systems these are also roms for current systems so uh hence nintendo really going after that place hard uh, and we know they've gone after other rom sites in the past and have won easily cease and desist letters usually work with them but um sometimes they have to go f further um uber chips website is currently offline uh it says under maintenance so uh, high chance the guy's just shutting the whole website down um, you know, to, to buy one of these kits off one of the various team executor websites, you know, they sell for about $48. Uh, $8. You can get um, a, a future pre order kit for the Switch Lite, uh, which is currently not hackable, uh, but, you know, they're working on a hack for it and you can pre order it. Uh, they also sell hacks for the SNES Classic, PlayStation Mini, Nintendo 3DS, Game Boy Advance, etc. So it's not just Switch they're going after, although the lawsuit is specific to the Switch hacks. Um, so Nintendo's lawyers are basically saying that it, that this is causing tremendous harm to the company, um, and they say that they know they're aware of at least hundreds of these devices that have already been sold, and Nintendo is seeking $2,500 per trafficking violation in each of these cases. So essentially, per device sold, uh, they're seeking $2,500 in damages because, um, you know, who knows how many games and stuff have been pirated and all that jazz. Nintendo can't go on people's individual Switches that bought these devices and figure that out. So they're just kind of round, you know, giving a nice round figure of 
Maybe it's based on the average amount of Switch games owned per unit or however they're, they're wording it in the legalese. Uh, you can go through the legal document yourself, which is rather lengthy. Um, it has a lot of stuff in it. Um, but that's kind of the crux of the argument. And I want to thank Polygon uh, for a lot of that breakdown. Again, I'll link to them down in the description because they do have the entire legal document there for you to read. Now, uh, as for my thoughts on this, obviously Nintendo has been combating hackers for a long time. Um, this is nothing new. But uh, what's interesting is that Nintendo seems to be shifting their strategy. In the past, Nintendo has done things like pay people to, to hack the system and give them $10,000 if they were able to find a valid hack. Uh, and Nintendo kind of sort of stopped that program or isn't supporting that program as well as they used to. And Nintendo uh, is getting away from the more trying to stop the hacks from an internal perspective. And I think they're more accepting of the fact that Every system is going to be hacked no matter what Nintendo does. And this was really the crux of the argument against my video back in, I think it was December of 2018, that talked about how, you know, Nintendo made this brilliant stop the hackers and all that. Um, Nintendo is still going to be creating patches and try to stop hackers as much as they can at a software level and in every hardware revision. But at the end of the day, they know that everything is eventually hackable. And because of that, they think it's better to go after the people that are doing the hacks and providing the hacks rather than going after um, just trying to patch the hacks themselves. And once you start getting legalese involved, you start getting actual fines involved, that is a great way to deter people from doing more and more of these projects. Now, um, you know, Nintendo has, has an example it doesn't like that fans create games based on their products or remaster games. Um, and so Nintendo goes after those people with cease and desist letters. But if they ever created an actual lawsuit and got actual money reparations, that would almost put a full stop to fans creating games because now there's actually um, legal repercussions for what you're doing beyond a cease and desist letter. Uh, going after a lawsuit like this is going to make some hackers think twice about what they're doing because no matter how anonymous you might think you are, uh, there's always a way to get caught and Nintendo can uh, at least get governments to shut down certain aspects of your public presence even if they can't figure out exactly who you are. Uh, so I think it's really interesting that uh, Nintendo is kind of shifting everything more to a legal perspective and being like, look, while not everything these do, like it, it, it's legal gray area in some cases because it's not against the law to hack your own devices that you own. You're allowed to take apart and hack anything that you want. The problem uh, that Nintendo has is these kind of hacks that are sold in a commercial way are widely being used for pirating, uh, whether it's pirating old games or pirating current Switch games. And this is well known, and it can't be denied that this is a popular thing done with these hacks. Now, this isn't to say everyone who bought one of these devices, everyone that, that hacks their Switch is pirating games. Uh, that's not at all the case. There are some people that they hack their Switch specifically so they can overclock it, right? They can, they can run it at the base clock speeds or even higher if they want. Uh, that makes their games they, they do own run better okay cool that's that, that's a, that's a valid hack and that's not even listed in the lawsuit um there's things like people backing up save files locally on their computer again not against the law not named in the save so again they're not they can't go after individuals for hacking your switches they can't go after me you or anybody else who individually hacked our switches ourselves because then nintendo would have to go under the presumption of what we're doing with those hacked devices, which they have to be able to prove in court, which, you know, it's really hard to prove on an individual basis what each of us is hacking our Switch for. But what they can do is go after the people that create these hacks and sell them at a commercial level because these people are making money off of this stuff. This isn't just some publicly free release thing that you could just download and do whatever. These are, um, the, the, these are things that they are profiting off of, selling people away to hack into their devices, and then once you're in there, it does enable pirating. Whether or not that's the primary crux of the hack doesn't matter. It does enable pirating, and Nintendo does everything they can to protect their, you know, protect their their systems from pirating games. So that's really what Nintendo's trying to do here. And in doing this, and in having already won an injunction for a similar lawsuit in the past, this is a great way to deter future hackers from creating ways and selling them publicly um, to profit off of it. Nintendo is trying to deter people from trying to make money doing this. Uh, and honestly, 
I think that's a great move for Nintendo. Now, this isn't me saying I have anything against the Switch hacking community. Uh, anyone who's followed my channel over all these years knows that I have nothing, no, no issues with the Switch hacking community in the general sense. I love that you can overclock your Switches. I love that you can do a lot of different things to your Switches. And to be clear, you don't need to buy their device to actually hack your Switch. How to hack a, a Switch, especially you know the first run models, is well known and easily doable even to this day. You don't need Team Executor to do it. But they are a company profiting off of it. The company that's at the forefront of everything. I say company. It's more like a conglomerate of people. Um, but th these are the, the people at the forefront of it all that are leading the charge and having the highest success rate uh, with hacking new devices Nintendo releases. So I think this is good for Nintendo. Um, even if there's obviously going to be people that use hacks for legit things like playing music in the background or um, watching Netflix on there, you know, by running Android or something, or uh, throwing, um, you know, backups on a, on a PC, overclocking their Switch. I hate to see those people punished for this, but those people aren't being punished. It's the people profiting off of hacking their device that enables the ability to pirate games uh, that Nintendo's going after. So again, I think this is a good thing. I think Nintendo is um, doing its best legalese effort to deter people from hacking now and in the future of their devices. Uh, I think that this will deter some. I think the hacking community, as it's proven with every lawsuit in the past and every attempt to stop them, is going to stick around. And there's, every device Nintendo releases, every device anybody releases, will always eventually be hacked so people can do whatever they want with those devices. Um, but as long as they're not profiting from those hacks, um, they could probably get away with it as just talking about it on the internet. So this is what I did to hack my Switch. Nintendo's not going after people that are just talking about it. They're going after people that are profiting off of it um, and people that are obviously actively distributing illegal things like the ROM sites. So, uh, again, I think this is a good thing for Nintendo. Um, I'm, I'm very curious what you guys think about this, though. We haven't talked about the hacking community in a long time. And, again, I don't have anything against the hacking community in general. I don't, you know, wish, you know, the, the, the anvil to drop on everyone at Team Executor. But reality is that uh, they are selling a product that does enable something that is illegal. And whether or not it's used for that doesn't really matter. Uh, they're profiting off a product that does enable illegal activities. So uh, that's the crux of Nintendo's legalese. They've already won one, uh, one legal case over it, and now they're just going to keep filing more and more and more because now the precedent is set, uh, and Nintendo clearly is just going to go after everybody until people stop selling things um, that make this stuff uh, possible. So uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in. I am Nintendo RoboDance from Nintendo Prime. Let me know your thoughts on all this down in the comments below. Obviously, if you comment, like the video, subscribe, and hit that uh, bell icon, you get an entry to our Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition giveaway. Uh, but that's all I got for you guys today. Hope you enjoyed this little voiceover gameplay with some with some images spliced in and stuff. Um, you know, I don't know how many of these videos I'm going to do. I think I'm going to mix in uh, how I cover news in the future with some on camera, some off camera, because off camera stuff is just quicker and easier to do uh, than it is to always do on camera stuff. But I like the mix. Uh, and obviously, Prime News will always be on camera for that and stuff. So thank you guys for tuning in. Catch you guys in the next video.